As a child, I thought that electricity was magic. And how could I not? You don't have a wand, but you simply flick a switch and you get light. Your TV starts entertaining you. Your clothes get washed. As an adult, of course, this changes a little bit. You stop seeing wonder and you start seeing utility. And it's very easy to take for granted what energy does for us every day. So just for a minute, think what your life would be like if you had absolutely no electricity in your life. I mean, no oven, no computer, no traffic lights, and God forbid, no smartphone. But really, to be honest, we've taken it for granted so much that today, when we think about energy, it's mostly when it goes wrong or, well, when you get the bill, right? Because it's never good news. But we don't think about the whole system that is bringing it together, the magic behind it, on how it's been generated and transformed and transported sometimes over hundreds or thousands of miles and is made available to you at the exact time that you just flick the switch. And for a minute, I'd like you to think how lucky we are. There are millions, actually billions of people in the world that don't have any access to energy. In fact, my friends Alex and Cornelius, they started a company called PowerMe. And what PowerMe does, it, it makes available to rural areas in Kenya where people don't have access to the grid, and it sells them, essentially, solar panels, small solar panels with a battery. They lease it and they pay every month a fee. And after a certain amount of months, the power media system is theirs to keep. There are 1.2 billion people in the world that don't have access to electricity. But electricity has been shown to be the single highest factor when bringing people out of poverty. And it's not that electricity creates wealth by itself but it affords people the opportunity to create things for themselves. In fact, the World Bank has found that in an electrified community, income grows about 38% a year. So that is quite significant. And PowerMe is by no means the first one in doing this. There are lots of companies doing it. But in their short eight months, they've already reached 8,000 people which is 1,600 families, and they have also managed to create 200 local jobs. Can you imagine in an otherwise undynamic community what this means in terms of economic growth? Children can go to school, they can do homework, opportunities can be sought. But what is clear is that solar energy is becoming, to the energy system as a whole, what the internet was to music, and to content, to information. Think about this. Before the internet, we got our newspaper, and we were receivers, consumers of information, consumers of music. But after the internet, we created it ourselves. And not only that, but we were able to share it with the world. Solar energy does the same for energy. And as a consequence, it changes the whole system. And I guess, you know, you'll be wondering, how did we get here? How did we change the system? Well, the reason is, we got to a point where three key innovations happen. The first innovation is that photovoltaic solar has gotten really cheap. I mean, really cheap. Over the past few months and years, every time we double the deployment of solar PV, the actual cost comes down by 20 to 25%. This is huge, because despite the fact that PV is growing very quickly, we have a tiny percentage of the system, so we have a lot of room to grow. And furthermore, the great thing about solar energy is that the fuel is free. So once you pay for the, the hardware, pretty much creating new energy is almost free, right? You only have to pay maintenance costs. And what this means is, if you're in a system in which you're paying very, very little for energy, but then you're paying a lot, comparatively to bring it to your home, then something needs to change. And what you need to do is you need to generate that energy close to you, right? So that means the whole system has got to change. The second innovation is storage technologies. It is clear that when the sun is shining, when there is wind energy, then obviously 
is not a problem, we have energy. But what about when we don't have either of those things? Well, we need a way to be able to store that energy for when we need it. And now we have it. There has been a lot of innovation spurred by a lot of investment from different technologies. Batteries are coming down very quickly in costs and they're improving in quality. In less than a decade, we're going to have batteries that can take us days even into storing energy. So that is again going to change the game. If you can produce energy very cheap and then store it very cheap, then it's very cheap, essentially. The third innovation is actually a merging of industries, and that is the electric vehicle industry. Electric vehicles are set to overtake or equal the price of combustion engine vehicles by 2025. That means in 2025, you'll go into a shop and an electric vehicle will cost you the exact same as a combustion engine vehicle. Not to run, just up from costs. And those are range in the range of about 200 to 500 kilometers in a one single charge, so it's pretty significant. What it means is that the cost of having an electric vehicle, comparatively, is going to be a lot, lot cheaper. And think about this. We more and more, especially in urban centers, we don't own our cars. In fact, what we do is we rent one when we need it. There are car renting schemes, car sharing schemes in most of cities around the world. And with self-driven cars, especially in taxis, the whole system is going to change again because we no longer have a lot of different owners, but one owner that has, think about this, a lot of batteries that can take energy when they want it, and they can put it back in the, in the industry when they want it, and they can move it around the city. They become a huge player, a broker, that takes energy when we have it and puts it back when we need it. They become almost a utility. So things are changing a lot, but threat not. Tomorrow when you wake up, none of the things would have happened yet. And that is because innovation takes time. It takes years, sometimes decades. For example, in um, another industry, you know, we had telecommunications, we had the telegraph, and then we had the landlines, you know, we had to kind of talk next to the wall, you know, when we talk to our friends. And then from the 90s, we got mobile phones, and then eventually, in 2006, the smartphone appeared, right? But this was not the case at all for Africa or India. In fact, in Africa and India, the penetration of telegraph and the penetration of landline is very, very, very small. It was mobile phones that got to the vast majority of people. And this is what made the difference because it completely changed their lives. And what's more, they paid less for their innovation and they got it, quick, they got it better and they, did, they paid less for it. But what about us? Okay, let's do a show of hands. Hands up who has a landline at home today. Please, hands up, hands up. Okay, well, let's say about 40% of the people. Hands up who actually uses it, other than to call your grandma. Hands up. All right, what, well, 10% of people maybe? And just to be clear, to make sure I don't make this stuff up, who has either a mobile phone or a smartphone here today, please? Right, okay, point made. The thing is, innovation happened over the, next, the last couple of decades, and you guys all embraced it. And it looked scary at first, but you embraced it, and it's part of your daily life. In fact, it's in your pocket. And that doesn't mean that you just went away and didn't use the last stuff anymore. You're still using it. It's just not a significant part of your life. Well, the same is happening with the energy system. It's changing. It's going into a distributed system. It's changing the way it works. But it won't happen overnight. What it means, though, is that if instead of looking at it as if it's scary, it's a threat, Oh my God, what's going to happen? And we look at it as an opportunity, as an, an habilitator of new companies, of new business models, of new opportunities. This is where the magic happens. And there are companies already doing that. Let me give you an example. There is PowerMe, and there are another 1.2 billion people that need help getting energy. That is a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs. There is a company called Solar City in the US. They're a sister company to Tesla, and what they do is they're a utility, but with a twist. They change the business model. So they go to your home, they put solar panels in your rooftop, you sign a contract with them, and you buy energy from them. And from day one, you paid nothing for the system, and you are already saving 50% of your bills. 
That seems pretty good, right? And after a certain amount of years, your contract runs out. And just like that, the system's yours. And they are not even the only ones doing this. There are other companies that are investing in your energy efficiency in your home. So what they're doing is they're putting, essentially, insulation in your home, changing your light bulbs, your appliances, putting a small thermometer and maybe a small battery. They're looking into how you use your energy, and they're making it cleverer for you, moving it around a bit, and they're saving you money. And you know how they make the money? They keep part of the money they save you, but you still save it. And then, at the end of the contract, you get to keep all of that stuff. And you just got me started, because then there is Tesla, and they have a power wall with battery, and you can produce your energy and store it, or you can sell it if you want. You can become a broker in the system. And they've produced a tile for your roof, so you don't even have to put a panel there anymore. You can just buy a tile that costs the same as a normal roof tile. And whilst we're at it, why we don't take every single construction material and make it solar so that we can take advantage of every surface. I mean coats, I mean paints, I mean everything. In France, there is a solar road already. Imagine the kilometers and kilometers of roads we can turn into solar panels. The parkings, the hospitals, the houses, the government buildings, it's everywhere. The possibilities are everywhere. And this is why I'm saying, yes, does it look scary that things are changing? Absolutely. But does it look also very interesting, a huge opportunity? Yes, it also does. And I want us to think of the huge opportunity as consumers and end users that can become producers, as business people with the opportunities that we have available, as futurologists thinking on what are people going to need for the future, as helpers, peacemakers, trying to get other people out of poverty. There are so many opportunities, and not only for you, also for companies like utilities that are key to this marketplace actually working. And to people like the government that can save a lot of money on imports and spend them with clean energy that doesn't pollute at all, right at home. So here is my message for you guys, and it's a simple one. I want you to go forth from here being conscious consumers of energy, understanding where it comes from, it, what it means for you to have it, knowing why renewable energy is exactly the future that we all need and want, harnessing the opportunity, maybe becoming a solar producer, maybe getting an electric vehicle, seeing the opportunity and perhaps becoming a solar entrepreneur, taking advantage of those opportunities. It is up to you to demand clean energy and cheap energy because it's absolutely possible from your utility, from your government. We're moving in this direction. And if you do any of these things or all of these things, you need to know that you are becoming part of the revolution, a revolution that will take us into a completely different future from what we know in terms of energy, which is a future of very cheap, very plentiful and clean energy for absolutely everybody. Thank you very much.